Thank you. And today I would like to talk about new paradigm of learning, which I call intelligent paradigm of learning. And because of different paradigm, I would like to consider the simplest possible model. And then I will generalize the simplest possible model uh, to more general models. So I understand problem of learning like choosing one function from the given collection of functions. But to simplify models, <coughs> I will consider a case where we have finite number of functions in set. So we have n function in set, and we would like to pick up one function from the set. Uh, and this is we call learning, but we will pick up one function based on our training data. That is the setting of problem in simplified setting. But before I will start the discussion, let me come back to <coughs> Schumann concept of information. Schumann start with very simple question. Suppose you have n objects, and you would like to pick up one object from the n possible objects. And you can ask Curie <coughs> questions, and Curie will answer yes or no, just one bit of information he will give you. Uh, how many questions you, can, uh, you, you have to ask to find the desired function? The answer is logarithm n. And the algorithm very simple. You split your function into n function in two subsets, and ask Curie is desired function in first subset, Curie will give you answer. You remove half of function where uh, there are no desired function, and you again split the, the, the rest subset into part and so on. After n step, log n steps, you will find the function. Well, let me formulate the same example for part recognition. You, you have n indicator functions in your set, and you would like to ask Curie uh, some questions, how many questions you have to ask, Th the same story to, to, to find the function. And the answer again, log n. How you do it? You just create x for which half function gives 0, and another half gives 1, and ask Curie what value gives desired function, 0, 1. Curie will give you answer, you remove, and so on. And in log n step, you will have whatever you want to have. But you will say, <coughs> it is not a good model, because it's too complicated. How you can, I should create uh, x training example, it is difficult. So let me give you IID data. How many IID data I need to, to show to Curie, and Curie will give me answer yes or no, to, to find the, the function which epsilon clause, epsilon clause um, in, in, in some probabilistic sense, to the desired one. And the answer is log n over epsilon. <coughs> With probability 1, 1, minus theta, you, 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 you see this bound. And this bound cannot be improved. But again, you have log n. Uh, like in Shannon case, exactly the same denominator, but you have different denominator. You have worse denominator. But you say, okay, it is too simple model for pattern recognition. Let among the given set of functions, there are no functions which perfectly separate data. It can make some errors. How many, uh, uh, how many examples I have to see? And the answer again log n in nominator, but in, in denominator, it will be epsilon square. You, every time you're losing constant, not order of magnitude in n, in number of function in the set, but in, uh, you ju you're just losing constant in the bound, and this bound cannot be improved. There are examples where it's achievable. Uh, in a couple of slides, I will show you sh that the same story happened in infinite dimensional set, uh, in continuous case, when you have continuous number of functions. Just everywhere n, 
will be uh, log n will be re, uh, re, uh, instead of log n you will use this dimension. That's it. The only difference. And I will show you how it works. But before I will do that, let me come back to the very first discussion about artificial intelligence, which took place in the 60s in Russia. And it is Kolmogorov remark. So he just uh, considered three categories of numbers. Are the ordinary numbers, L, and what means ordinary? The number of Ls which you can handle. Uh, say the number of examples which can you see during our, your, your, your lifetime. So let us agree that it will be between one and one million, if you want, 10 million, whatever you want. But there are big numbers. Two to the L, where L is ordinary numbers. And this is the number of objects from which we can choose the desired one uh, using ordinary number of examples. But there are a huge amount of functions, to the, to, like to the, to the, to the L, and what we can do about that. And then in, in, in this discussion, people say that it is out of our reach. So there is a three category of numbers. One is ordinary numbers that which can handle during our life. It is number of our examples. The big numbers, it is collection of functions from which we can choose one using ordinary number of examples. And there is a, a lot of function which is as out of our reach. And the goal of my talk is to show that to choose from big number, it is a it is poor deal. We would like to choose from the huge number of functions. But we cannot do that because it will contradict information theory. We should invent something, some model, which allow us to do that. And today I will talk about this model and I will call this intelligent model because it, 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 it does better than uh, Shannon theory information allowed. But whatever we can do uh, in, in sense of Shannon, I will call brute force learning because it's pure mathematical method without any intelligence. You do brute force and you will get the function you, you want. And before I will go to, to mathematical detail, let me stress that all algorithm which we're discussing now in machine learning, it is brute force algorithm. Uh, and this is element of VC theory, which is important. Uh, suppose we have <coughs> infinite number of functions. And we have finite number of observations, x1, xn. And uh, function is binary. How many different type of classification we can get using this set of function? And let it will be n of f, f is set of function, on, and x1, xl, it is number of observations. And if we will take logarithm from that and take expectation over IID examples, so we will have quantity which we call entropy, we see entropy of number of observations. But we don't know probability measure, we cannot take expectation. We would, would like to have supremum over all possible observation. That's we call growth function. And then we prove that growth function can be all linear or logarithmical. It cannot be in between. So and coefficients in front of logarithmical is called VC dimension. So and the question, <coughs> suppose we have infinite number of functions in our set. In VC dimension is uh, uh, some, some, some value. How many questions we should ask Curie to find one function from the given collection of function, which is epsilon clause to, to, to desire function? And the answer was like in Shannon case, log VC dimension over epsilon, or log VC dimension over epsilon squared, depending on if in your set of function there is a function you're looking for, or you, you're looking for the best function in the set of functions. So, and uh, everywhere in this uh, consideration, uh, we replace number of n with this dimension log L factor. 
And this is a theory of, of, of machine learning. We, we would like to minimize expected loss, but in fact, we, we, we can operate with empirical loss and uh, the question when it works. And this is a couple of theorems from VC theory. In terms of VC dimension and VC entropy, we have necessary and sufficient condition. We cannot beat it. So the necessary and sufficient condition, if you know probability merge, is entropy over number of observations goes to zero. If you don't know uh, probability measure, then VC dimension must be finite. And also last theorem says that if entropy over number of observations does not converge to zero, there are no algorithms, not only minimizing empirical loss, no algorithm at all, which can uh, uh, learn from, from, from the examples. So, and also uh, in VC theory we have a bound, two category of bound. If uh, among given collection of functions there are no desired function, you will have uh, empirical loss, uh, expected loss bounded by empirical loss plus some confidence interval where it's VC dimension over L and square root from that. But if you have uh, in your collection of functions, the function which is desired one, so then, then you will have um, with no square root. It is big difference. So when you uh, can solve deterministic problems, there is a function which separates with no error in your collection, you can do it much faster, you can converge much faster. And the last <coughs> example what I need, it is structural risk minimization. <coughs> because we have a struct, we, we have a bound, we can create structure on the set of function, we can have different VC dimension, and we can minimize uh, our uh, bound over both term over VC dimension and also over function in the subset of function, and we will have theorem which says that uh, structural risk minimization is always converged to the function if it uh, belong to the closure of the structure. So, so we have everything in the theory, necessary and sufficient condition when we can learn, and also universal uh, algorithm, structural risk minimization principle, which uh, allow you to find the function when L of number of observations goes to infinity. But <coughs> actually, we will consider some special case. In, in, in algorithm, we have two categories of algorithm. One category of algorithm, neural network. Suppose our neurons for simplicity will be McCulloch and uh, Pitts neuron. From mathematical point of view, that means that you're dealing with set of function which is piecewise linear function. Because when you have architecture on your, with your neurons, your, your, you can create piecewise linear function and you pick up from collection of piecewise linear function with fixed number of pieces as soon as you fix your uh, architecture of your uh, neural net, you, 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 you fixing number of uh, lines in piecewise linear function. So, and also I will talk about reproducing kernel Hilbert space. You can uh, have uh, a set of function in Hilbert space. But this is the most important theorem which de de demonstrate that VC dimension is not number of parameters. It has nothing to do with number of parameters. In my book, I have example when you have only one parameter, but VC dimension is infinite, and you can learn nothing about from, from this collection of function. But this example, which is very important, where VC dimension, where number of parameters is infinite, but VC dimension is bounded. So this is the case, suppose your data is living in sphere of radius one, then uh, VC dimension and, 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 and then VC dimension of hyperplanes in, in is bounded by norm of coefficients of your weights. So the, the, the number of coefficients can be infinite, but norm can be bounded and VC dimension is bounded. So it's nothing to do with, 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 with number of parameters. So now I would like to, to, to tell you that uh, a 
SVM is realization of structural risk minimization. I will use the theorem I would like to minimize uh, number of uh, value of sum of slugs under constraints where you have uh, inequality constraint, and also I would like to have a fixed VC dimension, norm of parameters less than. If I will do it accurately, I will get uh, uh, exactly uh, uh, VC dimension. I will come um, in the couple of next slide with that. Now I would like to talk about student-teacher interaction. So I will consider uh, two types of interaction. The first type, when, student, when, when teacher can control similarity between examples, which he showed to student, and, se and second is knowledge, knowledge transfer from teacher to students. So let me come back to Shannon case. Uh, to choose desired indicator function from n function, I must to ask log n question. But I would like to ask less question. But that means that a uh, teacher should give me, me more than one bit information. So one bit information for first class or second class, and another bit of information, I call it x star, and X star coming from completely different space, and we will talk about this second space, and that is news in intellectual uh, uh, machine learning. So you have second space, X star, and teacher gives you example from, from uh, also Y uh, for, for, um, for examples, and also X star. You can think that it is explanation to, 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 to X. So now when I have these two, I can construct two different models. Classical model for brute force uh, model when you have a pairs training data, X and Y, and you go to, to pick up from a uh, collection of indicator functions, one uh, which is desired for you. Uh, and also X is generated by generator of nature, that is just examples of nature and y generated by teacher, y given x. It is not deterministic, it can be uh, random. That is a classical machine learning setting in, in general setting. But I would like to introduce new one. I have triple. I have x, I have x star, which you can think like explanation to example x, and also I, can, I have y. Y is, again, first or the second class. And I also would like to find in, 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 in set of infinite number of functions in the same set, like in classical one, the one uh, which is minimized probability of error. So it is the same setting like in classical, but I have extra information. And I hope that because I have extra information, I can do it faster or I can choose not from, uh, say, big number of functions, but from huge number of functions. I can do something better because I have extra information. How it works? Uh, <coughs> so let me first introduce SVM for separable case. This is a separable case. Uh, slack variables are equal to zero. I minimize uh, norm, uh, which is I minimize VC dimension under some constraint. And I have the bound, which is no square root, VC dimension over number of observations. So now I have non-separable case. In non-separable case, I must introduce slugs. I have uh, uh, probability of test error, which will be uh, frequency of training error, plus confidence interval. Now it is square root from what I was be or ha had before. Uh, it is much worse than it was before. And the question is, why in this case we have so big difference? The confidence interval has no square root or has square root? In the answer, in non-separable non case, our goal was to estimate n parameters of vector w. In separable case. In non-separable case, we would like to estimate n plus l parameter, where n parameters, it is 
parameters of vectors and L parameters is parameters of slots. And when you increase number of examples, you increase number of parameters because you, you must estimate slots for everyone. So, mm, mm, and that probably uh, why we, we have so big difference. So, if so, we can make a trick. We can introduce set of functions which contain, uh, say, slot functions, and we try to estimate simultaneously two functions, slot functions and decision function. So, we can introduce um, Oracle SVM. So, I instead of explanation, we can uh, consider slug, real slugs, and then we will have the bound with no square root. And that is example. So, uh, red is a regular SVM, it converges, but it converges not too fast. But uh, blue, it is uh, SVMs uh, with privileged information. It converges much faster. And that's what, what, what we want to, to, to have. Uh, but what can a real teacher do? He cannot give you slugs, but he can give you correcting space, x star, and uh, some explanation in this correcting space, and also set of functions in this correcting space. And you would like to estimate two functions, as I told you. So if you will do that, you will, um, what, what you do in SVM, you map vector x in zeta space, and then construct in zeta space separating hyperplanes, that so you minimize this functional under given constraint, and also you're, you're using kernel trick, you're using instead of inner product, uh, kernel function. So and this is dual space for SVMs. You will have solution in form equation one, but you have to maximize, to find coefficients for expansion, you have to maximize functional two under some constraint. But in this support vector setting, you have kernel which plays two different roles. In equation one, it defines expansion function over kernels. In equation two, it defines similarity between two examples. So it can contradict this to goal. But now let us consider privileged information. We map vector x in zeta space, vector x star in zeta star space, and y the same. And then we will define our slug variables in zeta star space in the way how we define uh, uh, in uh, x space our decision function. And we will, would like to, to solve simultaneously uh, two problems to find uh, equation for our decision function and equation for our slug function. In blue, it is written slug function. You have two kernels, uh, uh, kernel for zeta star space and kernel for uh, uh, zeta space. And, and, and you have to, uh, to minimize this, uh, to, to this is expansion, first equation. In the second equation, you have maximized this functional under this constraint. Whatever is blue, it is new one. What's happened in the new one? Actually, teacher correcting your concept of similarity. He, he gives you in different space two different examples. And you can check similarity between these examples and make correction to your equation. So you will have different solution and you will have different problems. Let me show you how it works um, in specific example. This is the problem. Given amino acid sequences of protein, construct rule to classify family of proteins. This is decision space X is space of amino acid. But let's consider privileged information like 3D structure of the proteins. 3D structure of the protein contains whole information. And of course, you can do much better in 3D. So this is uh, what's happened. The first line, what does SVM? in amino acid sequences. The last line, it what does SVM in uh, information about structure. But if you're using privileged information only during training and constructing uh, 
this uh, new rule with similarity, you can reduce up to 10 times number of errors. Sometimes you cannot do that, like indicate red um, stars. But you, you know, um, it is in nature of the problem. Say, graphite in diamond uh, contain uh, the same element, carbon. The only difference in the structure. So if you don't have structure, you can do nothing. And probably this is this case. Let me give you another example, say, uh, time series prediction. You look in this black crosses, and you would like to predict what's happened in the red crosses. This is normal setting. But with privileged information, you have this black crosses, and you have green crosses, which is uh, after what uh, time of prediction. Of course, you, you don't have information what's happened in the future, but you have it information in the, your records. You have future in the past, and you can use it. And that is, what, okay, that is what's happened. So the, mm, you, you have SVM performance. You have um, performance using future, and you have uh, privileged information that is red one. You have one step ahead, five step, eight step ahead, everywhere it is better. And this is the most important part. It is uh, just digit recognition, five from eight. Uh, if you consider 10 by 10 scale, it is a difficult uh, problem. It is metaphoric uh, reasoning. I ask my friend, uh, professor of poetry, to describe poetical vision of this. Uh, digit uh, five. This half she saw five. Straightforward, very active, hard, very musculine, uh, with rather clear intention, so, 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 and 40 years old. That is vision of this. And uh, this eight uh, young man is energetic and seriously absorbed in his career, blah, 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 blah. And this is privileged information. And this privileged information contains more information than, than in pixel space. So we can make a code, active, pessim uh, musculine, feminine, and so on. And then we will have uh, this result. Uh, so blue is SVM. Uh, yellow is uh, in, in the poetic description. And red is in, in uh, SVM plus, which is uh, taking privileged information. So. There is another way, but the more important part is direct knowledge transfer from, from student to, from teacher to student. When you have triplets, you in fact have a two different path recognition problem. You have path recognition in space X. You have X, Y training data. X, uh, one, Y, one, X, L, Y, L. And you would like to construct rule Y, uh, which depend on x. And also you have x star y, x star uh, uh, l, x, x star l, y, l. And you would like to create um, decision rule in space x, x uh, star. So suppose that x star space is more, more appropriate for this solution. Then you have decision rule in this space. And you would like to transfer knowledge about this decision rule from space X star to the space X. You can do that. But before I will describe algorithm, let me give you an idea what is that. Suppose you would like <coughs> to classify images on biopsy in pixel space X into two classes, cancer and non-cancer. Uh, and suppose with images X, you are given description of images given by pathologist. He looking at this and he will say, aggressive proliferation of a, a cell of type A into cell of type B. Or he would say, absence of any dynamic in standard picture. It is completely different language. It is language of person who know mechanism and describing what's going on, but, but you're looking on the pixel space. But pixel space is very universal, and we see dimension in pixel space high. You need a lot of examples to, to, to do well, because when we see dimension high, it is, it is 
it means that your, your, your opportunity is wide. You can choose from many functions. So, and you need a lot of examples. But here, when you're talking on, on, on the professional level, when you're looking at the, what professionals developing in their life, they're developing very narrow level, which has a, a, a small VC dimension. And that is advantage, because on this language, you can, you, 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 you can uh, teach very fast. So now you have very good rule on the high level, and uh, uh, rule, and you would like to transfer your knowledge about mechanisms into space about pixels. So, and let's talk about knowledge representation. People in artificial intelligence know how to represent knowledge. Uh, they have three uh, factors. Fundamental element of knowledge in X star space, uh, main frames or fragments of the knowledge, and structure of the knowledge, combination of that. So uh, this is your knowledge in the middle, the formula in the middle. And we define frame like uh, function from kernel, which you fix your support vector and you have function kernel. Uh, represent function. So you would like to approximate this function kernel with some function from X space. And actually you can do it, you can, mm, here it was described how to do that. It is uh, article, there exists article where this published and you can, uh, you, you, you can check how it do it. But, mm, but the problem is that when you have these two spaces, you can transfer X space in different space, and which is closer to, the, uh, to, to describe space of professional, of, of high, 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 higher level, and try to construct in, 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 in this space your decision rule. So this is example, this is military example. You have a drone and drone flight over some, uh, some objects, and he's trying to fly fast, and has very wide angle camera, and make pictures, and that, that is X space. But X star space, the same drone flying slowly, and have a good camera with low angle, and, and, and fly back and forth, and then he, it, 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 it try to recognize the same object. So, uh, blue is SVM, which uh, don't fly fast. Green is uh, what's happened if you use information about slow flying um, drones. And red is knowledge transfer. You can improve three times. You can reduce error rate three times. So let me come back to what's happened. What, 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 what is new philosophy? I understood this very recently that new philosophy is actually very old. The very first philosophers like Plato and Kant, they talk about existence of two la languages in human reasoning. The first who absorbed this was Plato. And Plato gives a very nice uh, metaphor about this model. He told that uh, there, e there exists uh, shadow in the on, on, on the wall of cave. You have cave, you have fire, and you see shadow of what's going on. But you're trying to, to, to have an idea of what's, what's happened in reality. So you have language of shadow, but you have language of reality. And you can try to, 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 to check this to learn, to, to to unify these two languages. And that is intelligence when you are uh, looking on the shadow, have a guess about reality. The probability of X star given X, this is real intelligence, intelligent generator. So if you have this intelligent generator, you can do much better than if you don't have this intelligent generator. Uh, so the, the difference between brute force and intelligent reasoning depends on the information you're using. Or you're using information about shadow, or you're using also information 
which somehow uh, represent reality. So when I gave you this example about uh, cancer classification, I gave you language of shadow, which is pixels, what you're looking for, and language of reality, when some specialists who understand what going on describe your mechanism. This mechanism not in the pixel space, but it exists something. And that is jump from shadow to, to, to mechanism is intelligent generator. But everywhere it, it is exists. So, uh, so what, what is brute force algorithm about? You can pick up one function from the big number of functions. In, or you can try to, to pick up one function from the huge amount of function. Or if you have big amount, amount of function, you can try to do it better than in, in previous case. So, and that is what intelligence bring to table. Thank you. We have time for questions for Professor Vatnik. Thank you so much. Is there any work on uh, learning to instruct or learning to uh, imitate? For example, a kid not only learns to decide, but also when the uh, uh, that baby becomes bigger, I mean uh, elder, that baby also teaches others. So is there any work on learning to instruct? Or learning, about, to, yes. le learning to get examples. Yeah, give me an example. No, no. I mean, given the parent gives the examples, so the baby learns. And slowly and slowly that baby tries to get the examples and gets metaphors to learn new things. So what I'm saying is, is there any work on learning to instruct? Learning to what? Learning to teach. Learning to, oh, I don't know about that. Okay. It is, what, what is teacher? It is completely unclear. I think, it's a lot of question over here. I don't know about teacher. So I, I don't know, is it possible to learn to teach? I think, I think that something mysterious over here. I don't believe that intelligence is just only inside of us. It also outside of us. So otherwise, um, it does not keep law of preservations of information. You cannot create inside of uh, some uh, closed place new information. So it should be open place. So I don't think that intelligence only inside of us. But when you're talking, I can give you several examples. For example. Uh, in 18th century, when new geometry appeared, first it does, did Lobachevsky, and then it was immediately in three years repeated by three other guys. All this we see dimension. We proved it in 68, and then in five years, it's appeared in different places, not in machine learning community, people who uh, did something like that. It's not occasionally, I believe. So you bring something, and people come to capture that. And you can have a lot of examples like that. So what is teacher, I don't know, because it, 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 it talent, it is not just inside of him. He, he, he has some strong connections to something, I don't know. In the specific case of passing professional knowledge on, say, cellular identification, how do you translate that learning model of that professional experience of this is cancer into that mathematical model for the training example? I don't need mathematical model. I just want to describe 
the same situation, but on professional language. So when you're looking on the pixel space, it is not professional language. It is some general language you can, on, on, on pixel space to, uh, say, distinguish nice girl of Italian origin from nice girl of Spanish origin, whatever. But uh, when, when you're talking about proliferation of cells, you're talking about very narrow event. So you see dimension over there, small, and you can concentrate to your, your teaching in, 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 in specific way, and you can create the better rule. And then appears question, how to transfer, I know this rule in this space, how it should be transferred in space of pixels. But if you do that, so you can learn much faster. One of my friend, he studied how to play golf. And coach told him, when he teach him, don't hit the ball, seduce the ball. And every time when he hit the ball, teacher, uh, coach told him, you don't like macho, it doesn't work. Or when he make it too polite, you're too polite. And he, this, my friend, told that in a couple of days, he completely understand what coach want from him. And that is art of intelligence, to invent this language, to invent these metaphoric images, which will help you to, 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 to reach the gap between big number and huge numbers. Thank you. Uh, so continuing the line of uh, uh, philosophical um, parallel, uh, if, if we think about Kant, he said that we essentially cannot know the object by themselves, right? We, cannot, we can only learn the ideas. Yeah. Uh, and what's happening today, we try to transfer our ideas to the machine and make machine intelligent. But the question is whether our intelligence is optimal in that sense. Maybe machine can develop its own intelligence, which will be even higher than ours. And so, your so thoughts on this? My, my understanding is that machine, what, when I'm talking about intelligent uh, learning, uh, we're trying to have a source of intelligence. I don't believe that it is absolutely true, whatever you, you will describe on different language, but it is much closer to truth than whatever you will describe on universal language, or pixel language. So every time, but you don't know this formals, you don't know exact theory, but you have connection to the smart guy who can express for you what, what's happened on this high level. And that is X star. So the source of X star, it, is, it, is, it can be different, it can be future in the past. It can be, uh, say, advanced technical model. It can be great metaphoric, I, I like metaphoric uh, examples because a lot of learning related to metaphoric examples. Actually, <coughs> when I understood this, I, I came to uh, philosophy department in Princeton and asked guy what they know about metaphoric reasoning. It was one guy who, who worked on that. He told me know nothing, but my great teacher taught me exactly in this way. So that's what he told me. I believe that we know nothing about ourselves. So we're trying to, to, to do in machine learning intelligent brute force algorithm. But when you're doing brute force, come back to Shannon. You can pick up from big number of functions, but not from huge. But number of functions in, in reality huge. If you would like to do better, you need to, to, to beat Shannon. So to do better than just brute force. And that means to to capture some new information through metaphoric reasoning, through all this stuff. And, and we just only starting to understand this, starting to, to do that. And also, I'm in this business for quite a long time. And for me, since end of 60s, since we developed VC theory, nothing drastically happened in machine learning theory. The same necessary condition, insufficient conditions, the same upper bounds, a little bit constant difference, but 
It's not drastic. It is because we, 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 we explore the same model, but model is primitive. And by the end of 60s, we mostly understand this model. But now we have to introduce new model. So I think that leaves us with some uh, nice things to discuss over lunch. Uh, let's thank Professor Vatnik again. Thank you.